season premiere of Sports Jam. I'm John Jacobson. I'm Jay Wilcox. Thanks for joining us for another season. This week highlights from week two in prep football. In our Sports Jam spotlight we'll meet a volleyball standout from Hopkins who is a team leader on and off the court. And I'll talk soccer with the Maple Grove girls. We'll kick things off with football. The Wyzetta Trojans had an impressive opening night showing shutting out Blaine. They look to build on that win as they played host to coach Darren Lamker and the Dinah Hornets. Opening drive of the game for Wyzetta and Christian Vassar powers in for a 10 yard touchdown run as the Trojans take an early 7 0 lead. Next time they get the ball on offense, the Trojans go to the air. Thomas Schmidt hits Jacob Wildermuth and he goes the distance. It's a 62 yard scoring play and Wyzetta leads 14 0. Wyzetta's defense was solid again in week two, especially pressuring the quarterback. Oshaka Rokes gets the sack on George Sandvin. The Trojans get one more possession in the first quarter. Schmidt to Wildermuth again. Nine catches and 149 yards receiving and two scores for Wildermuth. 21-0 after 1-21-7 at halftime. Second half, it's Rokes and number 99 Joe Demro combining on another sack of Sandvin. He sacked seven times in the game. Back to the offense, fourth quarter, Schmidt to Luke Bodine, he breaks the tackle, goes in for a 15-yard touchdown. Wyzetta wins 34-15 to improve to 2-0 in the season. After the game, quarterback Schmidt talked about his offensive line. You know, it starts with the O-line up front. If you, yeah, you can have a good run game, but if you don't have an O-line, you don't have a run game. And the guys up front, you know, I'm, I got to be buying them dinner tonight or something. I didn't get, I haven't gotten sacked in either games. And I mean, I credit all my, all the, all the touchdowns, all the stats, they're all, all to them. They're all them. Both Maple Grove and Totino Gray suffered rare losing seasons in football in 2018. The Crimson and Eagles were each 0-1 this season, coming into their Week 2 matchup on Friday. First play from scrimmage, Nate Elms completes the long pass to Nathan Ross. The Crimson capped the drive with a field goal for an early lead. The Eagles answer in the second quarter. Christoph Polkowski airs it out. Sam Quick makes a great catch for the touchdown, and Grace leads it 7-3. At halftime, an anniversary celebration for the 2004 and 2009 Petuno Gray State Championship teams. Fourth quarter, still 7-3. Spencer Weary in at quarterback now for Maple Grove. He gets through and goes 80 yards for a touchdown. And the Crimson go ahead 10-7. But Grace gets the winning score as Kolkowski completes the pass to Isaac Richards on the sideline. And he gets loose for an 89-yard touchdown. And the Eagles get to one and one on the season with a 13 to 10 victory. With a season opening win over Eastridge in hand, the Champlain Park football team looked to win its second straight game of the season as they hosted rival Blaine in week two. An 89 yard drive to start the game for the Rebels is finished off with a one yard touchdown run by Sean Shipman and it's seven nothing Champlain Park. But Blaine strikes back. Tyler Schuster airs the pass out to a wide open Julius Reynolds. This one goes for 72 yards and a touchdown. As the Bengals tie it up, they go up 10 to seven after one quarter. Second quarter and quarterback Jace Miller rolls out right and throws back to Dom Witt for the four yard touchdown pass. This makes it 14 to 10 Champlain Park. And the Rebels run it well all night. Shipman runs for 220 yards and Miller here sprints 41 yards on the way to 122 yard night for him. This one sets up another Miller to Witt touchdown pass and it's 21-10 Champlain Park at halftime. Shipman carries it 39 times in the games. Here's his eight yard touchdown run in the third quarter as Champlain Park wins it 28-17 rolling up 443 yards of offense. 
Armstrong scored an impressive shutout of Spring Lake Park in their season opener. And they look to follow that up with another good outing against a Hopkins team that was also 1-0 coming in. Armstrong takes the early lead. Jake Breitbach waits until Ty Bowman comes open across the back of the end zone. Start of a big night for Bowman. The Falcons capitalize on a Hopkins turnover. Breitbach flips the lateral out to Caleb Jones, and he gets in for the first of his two TDs in just over a minute. Armstrong goes up 20 to nothing after one. Second quarter, and Breitbach sees single coverage on Bowman. A 42-yard touchdown pass ensues, and Armstrong takes a 27-3 lead into halftime. Hopkins tries to battle back. A nice run here for Demetrius Patton. He just gets it over the goal line. A two-point conversion brings them within 27-11. But Jones adds a TD early in the fourth quarter, and Armstrong rolls to a 37-11 win to move to 2-0. and Now to girls swimming, where the Lake Conference is undoubtedly the best in the state. For nine straight seasons, the state champion and runner-up has come from that conference. Three-time defending state AA champion Edina visited another good team, Wyzetta, on Thursday. The 200-yard medley relay, Wyzetta's team of Emma Reinke, Jenna Marquette, Melinda Zhang, and anchor Sarah Chow win with a time of 1 minute 50.11. Wyzetta also wins the 400 free relay. The 200 freestyle, it's Edina's Claudia Chang racing to the win in 156.16. Her teammate Katie McCarthy finishes second. 200-yard individual medley, Brecken Merkel takes first place in 2 minutes, 8.77 seconds. Wyzetta's Melinda Zhang holds on to take second, just ahead of the Hornets' Allison Burns. Nora Klarkowski Vidine is the winner in the 50 free, coming in at 23.95. Zhang later won the 100 butterfly and Marquette the 100 breaststroke for Wyzetta, but Edina wins the meet 105 to 79. Well, as we've noted, Jay, the Lake Conference is really tough in swimming and diving. Dinah won that duel, and Minnetonka easily won their own invitational on Saturday. Yeah, well, that has a pretty good team, mm -hmm. too. It's uh, easy to get overshadowed by those two teams, though. Still to come, highlights from volleyball, soccer, and more as the season premiere of Sports Jam rolls on. Welcome back to Sports Jam. How about some volleyball? Yes, Osseo is looking for a nice season this year. The Orioles played their first conference match as they face Tatino Grace on the road at the Eagles' home court. Osseo starts out strong in this one. Eliana Tecum sets it to Riley Steister for the kill. The Orioles take the first set, 25-16. And they dominate the second as well. Tecum gets it to Lindy Odry for the kill, and Osseo takes a 25-17 win as they go up two sets to none. Grace comes back though. Osseo thinks they have a point here, but the dig is ruled good and then it drops in on the Osseo side for a point. The Eagles take the third set, 25 to 19. The fourth set is a good battle. Marley Webb gets the kill for Grace for a 23-22 lead, but it's Osseo pulling out a 27-25 win as Audrey gets the kill and the Orioles take the match in four. The Champlain Park volleyball team won its first state championship last fall. The Rebels graduated four Division I players from that team, and they're finding they're going a little tougher so far this season. Tonight, these two teams are two Class 3A state champions meeting as the Rebels hosted Lakeville North. It's a close match throughout. Lakeville North sets it middle. Abby Milner wipes it off the block for a kill. Panthers take the first set 25-22. Champlain Park responds. A nice dig by Megan Panzer leads to a kill for Hannah Prasky. The Rebels prevail 25-23, tying the match at one. Champlain Park has a nice run early in set three. Taylor Hillman gets the kill here for a 5-4 lead. It grows to 8-4 moments later. But it's Lakeville North coming through for the win. Maddie Horniak gets the kill. And they surge into the lead and go on to win 25-22 in the third. The Panthers control much of the fourth set. Ella Thompson in her first match back from an injury gives them a spark. The Panthers win in four. Champlain Park was 3-2 and two in Marshall at the big Southwest Minnesota Challenge, placing sixth. Wyzetta was second in that tournament. Hopkins is ranked 10th early in the season in volleyball. The Royals had a thriller as they went on the road to face Centennial. First set, great dig by Hopkins' Stella Swenson, and then Shadir Tut will win the battle at the net for a Royals point. But the Cougars will take the set. 
25-17 on the ace serve by Mackenzie McDonald. Second set, Hopkins' Emma Maythaler gets the big block here for a point. On set point, Tut doesn't get a great hit on this ball, but it does get down for a point, and the Royals win 25-18. Set three, Maythaler with another big block for the Royals point. Claire Ruthenbeck drops in an ace serve, and Hopkins grinds it out, winning 26-24. Set four, the teams trade big kills. Sidney Peterson comes through for the Cougars. But Alex Holmgren answers back for the Royals. Set point for Centennial. Ashley Crowell puts it down. We are going to set five. A great point for the Royals here. Ruthenbeck gets the dig, and then Stella Swenson sets up Olivia Swenson for the kill. And on match point, it's Olivia Swenson with the winning kill as the Royals take the set 15-9 in the match, three sets to two. We'll meet the Royals. Shadir Tot later in our Sports Jam Spotlight. Now to soccer, where the Champlain Park and Maple Grove girls teams each got off to strong starts. The Rebels paying a visit to Maple Grove. Maple Grove's Lauren Bredensteiner knocks it to Emma Fournier. She's robbed by keeper Malia Brady, but the Rebels can't clear it. Sydney Frederick puts it away for the game's first goal. To the second half, and Paige Kalal converts on a penalty kick for Champlain Park, and that's it for the scoring, and it ends in a 1-1 tie. We'll hear from the Crimson later in the show. Also in girls soccer, Heritage Christian Academy and Breck met last week with the Mustangs aiming for a third straight win in the young season. Breck at home to face the Eagles. Just a few minutes into the first half, Breck's Hannah Poladol serves the corner kick. Caitlin McBean heads it in for a 1-0 Mustangs lead. A short time later, McBean returns the favor. Centering pass finds Poladol for the shot and goal. Second half, McBean wins the race to the loose ball and scores again. The Mustang senior gets a hat trick on her 18th birthday. Breck wins this one 4-0 the final. In boys soccer, Brooklyn Center looking to stay unbeaten. Jonathan Hernandez sends it ahead and Simeon Dawson gets control and lofts it over the St. Croix Lutheran keeper and it's tied 2-2. Two to two. After the Crusaders go back in front, the same combination works again as Dawson chases it down and tucks the shot inside the goalpost to tie it up late at 3-3 and the game's headed to overtime. In OT, St. Croix gets one off a corner kick. Luis Pereira is left all alone and he puts it away through the defenders here. But BC has one more rally left in the final 30 seconds. Dawson does it again, scoring to tie it. The game ends in a 4-4 draw. Brooklyn Center enters the week now at 4-0-1. The annual cross-country meet honoring two longtime coaches in the Hopkins program featured a couple of local teams last week at the Bauman Round Invitational at Gale Woods. Eden Prairie wins the boys' meet ahead of Eastview and Pryor Lake. Host Hopkins is fifth with Armstrong tenth. Nicholas Scheller of Chanhassen is the individual winner. St. Michael Albertville takes the girls team title with Minnetonka second and Eden Prairie third. Hopkins places sixth and Armstrong twelfth. Allie Weimer of STMA wins the girls race. Lacey Provenzano of Hopkins places third. And the racing season, I think they are appreciating the cooler weather we've had this yeah. fall compared to some early season races. And that meet's usually pretty good. There's some decent teams there and, and a good early season test. Kind of see where teams and runners are at. Still to come on Sports Jam, we'll meet a Hopkins volleyball player who's moved from Iowa to middle, Minnesota in middle school, sparked her prep career. Her coaches and teammates call her a natural leader. In our first Sports Jam Spotlight story of the season, we meet a Hopkins volleyball player who overcame personal loss at a young age to succeed. Shadir Tut moved to the Twin Cities from Iowa in eighth grade. Now in her fourth year of varsity volleyball at Hopkins High School, the senior is grateful for the opportunities she received coming to Minnesota. It's been really just like an honor playing here. I love every second of it and I'm grateful every day to be honest. Club 43, which is where she's kind of grown up playing, has done a great job supporting her on and off the court. And um, she's, she's worked really hard to get to where she is today. Her and my club coach, my ex-club coach actually, Annie Glavin, they've made me to where I am today. And they've honestly brought so many opportunities to me. They're the reason that I committed to a D1 school. And I, I'm so grateful for that. I love them for that. 
Shadir is six foot one and a physically gifted middle blocker. She's one of the leaders for this Hopkins team. And with a smile that can light up a room, a great teammate to be around. It's so infectious, just her smile and the way she celebrates after every point. It's so, it just, you can see how it lights up her whole team. I don't even know if she fully understands uh, her effect on those around her. Like she just lights up a room with her smile and her personality and people are drawn to her. She was the type of teammate that you want to have on your team. She's an amazing person on and off the court. She's your best friend, honestly. She's has the best integrity and just the desire to win and amazing focus that you just don't see every single day. And it's just, she's an amazing player to play with. Outside of her athletic talent, Shadir considers herself mentally tough on the court. It's one of those things, I see people have head cases all the time. They'll make an error, they get blocked like three times in a row and they're like, wow, I'm in a funk now. It's more of like just the next point. I still think of it as a game. I'm like, oh, I'm still, just still playing a game. So it's so whatever, don't want to think about it too much. Perhaps some of that mental toughness comes from a deep personal loss that Shadir and her six older siblings suffered nine years ago. That's when they lost their mother in a fatal car accident. I didn't realize it at the time. Being so young, you can't really grasp anything like that. But then as you grow older, you see people like, I don't know, like how they build connections with their family and whatnot and just how they just lived a normal life and what I consider to be a normal life. And then now that I look back on it, I lacked I feel like I missed out on a whole bunch not having that motherly figure and then just having a, like a dad to look up to, which is not wrong in any way. I just feel like I missed out on a little bit. Her older siblings immediately stepped in after the tragedy. While their father was working long days, Shadir always had someone watching over her. I didn't realize at the time being the really oblivious child that I was, but now that I think back on it, they gave up so much just to help their family, and I'm so grateful for that. Like, no one asked them to say, you have, like, you have a chance for a scholarship, you have to throw all that away because your sisters are in need. I was like, wow. Yeah, really thinking back, I'm like, that's a lot to give up, and they really just did it immediately, no hesitation. Chu's volleyball career won't end this fall. She's accepted the scholarship offer to play collegially at Coppin State in Baltimore. I really wanted to major in veterinary medicine and they have a beautiful program for that. And then when I went there, I always thought I wanted to go to a huge school, but it's super small and intimate. I think you can have such a like bigger connection with your professors if you're there. So I immediately fell in love with it. And I saw like the science area and I was like, oh, I'm gonna live here. There is still a lot of season to go. Shadir's goal is to help bring the Royals to the state tournament after an early playoff loss in 2018. Last year, we didn't end on the best notes against Armstrong in the semifinals. So that's kind of just been like, I don't know, a little sting in our back lately. So we've been wor really working for that. And if we can get to the same spot and, I don't know, prove to everyone that we are Hopkins, that'll, I don't know, that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Shadir was born here in the U.S., but her parents are from Sudan, and she was hoping to take a trip there with her father to meet her extended family sometime in the near future. Jay talks girls soccer with the Maple Grove Crimson next. Welcome back to Sports Jam, the Maple Grove girls soccer team hoping for big things again here in the 2019 season after back-to-back -back state tournament appearances. And we're joined by a couple of their players and also by head coach Ben Lavana. Starting with Jordan Pauly, you know, how do you feel about this season so far as your team is kind of shaping up and getting into the conference play? Well, I mean, we started off the season super strong and it does hurt to get a few tough games in there, but it's better now than later in the season. So I think it's just taught us a lot, and it only makes us come back stronger in upcoming games. Yeah, a couple of rivals played you pretty tough with uh, Centennial giving you a loss and then uh, tying Champlain Park, but is that better for you right now to have those than, than maybe some easy games? Yeah, right now it's all about just working towards state, so it's better to get challenging games and just easy competition, so it's definitely pushing us to our best ability and only making us better for the future. I know when I talked to your, your team in uh, preseason, you obviously lost some good players, but you also have a pretty nice returning group. Can you see some improvement in players have stepped up and, and are now taking bigger roles than they had last year? Oh, yeah, definitely. Since we lost, I, we had, I don't know if it was seven or eight seniors that left last year. It definitely pushes the, the incoming upperclassmen to stand out as leaders and push each other to be our best. And it is different now that most of our team is upperclassmen, so I think it does help us bond together. And just knowing that we've played with a lot of these same players in the past, it really helps. Jordan, thanks for joining us. Good luck the rest of the season. And Hannah Zahn, uh, how are you feeling about what you've seen from this Crimson team so far? 
Um, I'm feeling really good about it. I feel like our team chemistry is there and just like overall team bonding, stuff like that is really strong. And then technically, I feel like we could clean it up a little bit, but everybody has a strong foundation on their technical skills, which is really promising for us in the future. You know, your team started out with three straight wins and then a little bit of a you know bump in the road this, this past week here, but uh, is that not a bad thing at this time to, to get tested like that? Yeah, definitely not a bad thing. It kind of shows us like we can't get overconfident and it shows us like where we are and what we need to get better on. So I feel like it was really good this week. Obviously a tie and a loss is not ideal, but it helps us like become better. I know you did have to replace some scoring punch from last year. Are you feeling that that's coming around where you're you know, getting some opportunities and, and going to be able to convert some more goals too? Yes, I think um, we have gotten a lot of offensive opportunities and now we just have to like kind of calm down when we have them and put them away. Hannah, thanks for joining us and have fun the rest of the season here. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Coach Ben Levon, uh, what is your impression of this group here as you head toward the middle part of September? I've been super impressed with how they've worked together. Um, it's been, uh, uh, there's players taking on new roles and so the way they've adapted to playing in different spots, um, changes on the fly, uh, and really encouraging each other. They've really bought into the idea that the strength of our team is our team. So it's been super encouraging to see them this early in the season uh, playing strongly on that idea. And you were telling me that even you know in the loss to Centennial or the tie with Champlain Park that you thought your team played pretty well. Is that a good sign even if the result maybe doesn't show it? Yeah, when we when we walk away knowing that we only had to clean up a few things, um, you know, we still got the results, um, but we are playing to be playing our best soccer in October. So we're playing each day to win, but you know we're still looking to be at that spot. So the you know tough teams showed us some of those highlighted those areas that we need to work on. So we definitely have a plan for the next few weeks. You were telling me too that uh, your depth's being tested a little bit with these uh, three game weeks. You know, how are you handling that part as you head into another one uh, in the week ahead here? Uh, it's been tricky. Um, the, this is where the girls get to rely on all that extra work they've done in the off season um, to, to recover, um, making sure that they take care of their bodies and we're doing the best as our coaches to make sure that we're helping them do that. All right, Ben, thank you for joining us and uh, best of luck the rest of the season here for the Crimson. Thanks a lot, thanks for coming. All right, Ben Levon, the head girls soccer coach here at Maple Grove as they'll again shoot for another trip to the state tournament come later in the season. And this week, another busy one, as he said, games against Osseo, Spring Lake Park, and Park Center. It's back again for a new season. Our play of the week sponsored by Chick-fil-A of Maple Grove. You can vote, and this week's four plays are up on our website now at ccxmedia.org. Go to the CCX Sports Play of the Week under the Sports tab and vote for your favorite play. What we'll else the winner on the September 16th edition of Sports Jam? And here's last week's winner. In Cooper football season opener against Waconia is Joe Russell. The Cornelius Wooten touchdown pass holding 780 votes to win our first play of the week for the new school year. Thanks to all of you who voted. We'll be right back. Mark Saturday, October 12th on your calendar for the Autumn Woods Classic at the Elm Creek Park Reserve. Find out more at ccxmedia.org under cities and in the community. Looking for local? Even more local? CCX Media gives you the option to connect with your community on multiple levels. CCX Sports brings you ultimate coverage in local prep sports with full game coverage of over 120 high school games a year with highlights and features on our daily newscast. Then, our weekly Sports Jam show gives you a close-up look at local athletes, highlights of local games, and in-depth interviews. Our content can be watched at home or on the go. Visit ccxmedia.org. Our game of the week is the Suburban Blue District football game featuring Park Center and 2-0 Armstrong. Kickoff is at 7 o'clock Friday at Armstrong High School. You can watch the game live on CCX1 and ccxmedia.org. It also replays Friday night at 10, Saturday at 4 p.m., and Sunday at 10 a.m. And that will do it for this first show of Sports Jam for the season. And plenty more to come all throughout the fall, winter, and spring seasons here. Thanks so much for joining us on Sports Jam and enjoy the fall season.